I've been playing around with the idea of this one for quite a while in me noodle up here. Every time I watch MotoGP and you see the camera that stays horizontal with the horizon as the bike tilts, it's all done with accelerometers and a little microcontroller. I've seen a couple of uh, attempts at this on some other YouTube videos. One was really sketchy. It was just kind of all over the place. I thought about doing it that way and one day it just dawned on me, why not just use a pendulum? Just a straight up pendulum. The only drawback is when you go into a real high G turn, it may overcompensate a bit. But the beauty of it is, is it's just really a simple mechanism. There's no electronics involved. And you know me, I like to engineer things super, super simple. So come on over here to the workbench. I'll show you the ideas I've come up with. Here's what we got going on. I've got a GoPro mount, just one of the little quick clip kinds that go into the sticky uh, base that you can mount anywhere. And then there's these other extensions you can buy that you can articulate any way you want the GoPro. Two of these stacked together gets me up in the air pretty high. So I can mount the GoPro like this. And then uh, the idea is to have it just pivot and just put a weight down below. So when you go into a turn and you go like this, the GoPro will tend to stay on a horizontal plane. Last night, I kid you not, about 1.30 in the morning I woke up and it just suddenly dawned on me that I could use one of these guys. These are uh, the LCD back uh, covers. I've got a kit for an LCD to go back uh, on my old GoPro Hero here. And this allows room for that LCD on the back. Well, I've got a bunch of these. I got two of these kits on eBay for really cheap. And um, this one here is for the wrist mount. I can just drill a hole right here and then I'll run a quarter 20 bolt through it, cinch it down with a nut, slide a spacer onto that, and then we can mount the GoPro to it and then this section right here I'll just drill out to quarter inch, slide this through, put a nylock on the other side, that's a, a nylon self-locking nut by the way, and just snug that a little bit and then this will serve as the pivot point. And then down here on this part I can attach uh, a big fat lead fishing sinker or two or three whatever it takes hanging down and that will be my counterweight for the camera so the first thing we got to do is drill a hole in this up to a quarter inch take this up to a quarter inch size and drill a hole in the center of this uh, to a quarter inch and when this goes on the back of the camera of course there's going to be nothing to hold it and push in place so what I'll do is just add a big piece of uh, foam in here that will push up against the camera and hold it into the housing. That's the plan. Okay, that's good and tight. Now the spacer goes on. This is just a nylon spacer with a quarter inch hole in it. And then that'll go on. Let's get that mounted back on here. Let's see, we're gonna put the flat, the flattest side will be towards the camera back. And the neat thing about this fully articulated mount is I can move it like this so that there's plenty of room for the camera to swing and not bump into anything below. And once I get it mounted on the bike, I can you know, dial it in and get it all leveled out. That looks pretty good right about there. So then this will go on like this, and that's how it'll pivot. Put another washer on, And then the quarter 20 nylock will go on. And before I do that, I'm gonna cut this off right about there. Okay, let's see. This is gonna go like this. Get the washer on there and the nylock. This is cool. This is a great hack. I mean, this is a hack in the truest sense of a uh, hack. Totally taking something else and turning it into something else. This is awesome. This would be so cool if it works out the way I, I hope it will. See, I can actually 
adjust that, I suppose, but I really want it to be pretty free floating. Just enough to take out the play. Okay, now it's time to find a piece of foam that'll squeeze in there. I'm gonna put the GoPro on and we'll see where everything sits. This will work, I believe. Piece of uh, some of that floor mat material. Same thing I used for the uh, the saber seat base. Yeah, that'll work. It squishes it just right. Let's get the little mount guy on here, and that's it. There it is. One GoPro mounted up, ready to swivel. Now it's not going to swivel right on the axis of the lens, as you can see, but I really don't think that's going to make too much difference um, in the grand scheme of things because of the super wide angle that the GoPro has. So we need to get some weight on here, I can tell already, because it's really not going to move on its own. So now i got to find a big old sinker. I might have to make a trip to the uh, sporting goods store for that one. <clears throat> Went to the store and got some four ounce sinkers. I think one of these is going to work just fine. And what I'll do is smash this in a little flatter with a hammer. It's already got a hole in it. Then I can slide it right in there and just put a bolt through it. Small bolt or, or for that matter even a wire tie. Something to just hold it in place. And then that should hang there. Just clear the bottom where it'll swing freely. I might have to take just a little bit off the bottom to get it to clear everything. But <clears throat> anyway, let's do a little slamming that with a hammer action because it's just lead so not that hard to flatten out you should be able to get it thin enough to slide in there yep I've been hitting the bottom of this with a hammer and it seems to work pretty well to shorten it up and then I don't lose any of the weight. Lead poisoning! <laughs> now we can mount this to the bottom of the camera. I've got the nylon screw here. Just happened to be laying around on the workbench. Yeah, I figured since it's a nylon screw it can't really hurt the plastic any on the GoPro. So let's get that on there. Put the nut on. And then we'll just tighten that up nice and snug. Let's get the weight hanging straight down. There it is. The auto leveling setup. Ha! Well, now it's time to put it on the motorcycle and see if it actually works. Well, there it is. Looks like the weight clears everything just fine. Seems to swivel pretty freely. Not sure if it's going to come back to center exactly perfect, but you know, by the time the bike wiggles around a little bit, it'll probably do that. So, I guess now the thing to do is uh, fire up the GoPro, get on the gear, and go for a ride, see how it does. Well, as you saw on that onboard video, it kind of worked. Uh, at slower speeds, you know, it was tilting back and forth doing its thing. But at uh, more of the higher speeds, like that one long sweeping turn I did, you can tell that it, it's a compromise. It starts to tilt, but I think here's what's happening. So let's say I'm going through a, uh, well, from your perspective, let's say I'm going through a, a, a sharp right-hand turn. The centrifugal forces at play are pushing toward the outside of the turn. I want this thing to tilt like this during that turn. And right now at rest, gravity is just pulling down on the weight and, you know, pulls it straight down. However, some of that force this way when I'm going through the turn is, is canceled out by the centrifugal force this way. So it goes about halfway and stops. 
So it's kind of like there's the equilibrium. Instead of tilting as far as it should, where this is perpendicular to the surface of the road, it's a compromise. It's, it's the equilibrium between the centrifugal force pushing this way and the forces trying to push it, you know, pull it to the earth that way, the, the pendulum, I guess you would call it. So uh, there's a bit of physics coming into play here, which is kind of fun. So I've got a couple other ideas. Well, the weight has been taken off and there's a little problem. It doesn't really want to go back to level because it's heavier on this side of the camera. That's where the lens assembly and everything is and uh, it just doesn't want to go level. So I think what I'll do is put the weight back on but chop half of it off. Got the weight back on. We're down to about two ounces. It's bent that way slightly because uh, it needs to compensate for that heavier side of the camera. So I don't know. Let's just take it out and give it a try again. Well, obviously from that little bit of footage, uh, that didn't really work that well either. It didn't really tilt as much as it did when it had more weight, which tells me maybe I need more weight. So I put two sinkers on this time. Looks a little bit strange. Uh, wow, my bike's got balls now. I'm gonna haul balls. Uh, let's go give it a try. Well, two weights didn't really do too much more, did it? Kind of looks cool, but uh, I really don't think that's the answer. But I've got a setup here that I could put a servo on later. I've got some parallax goodies. Uh, I've got an accelerometer, and uh, maybe I could come up with something that will work electronically. I don't know. Maybe I'll inspire somebody out there to give it a try themselves and come up with a uh, auto-leveling camera mount for a motorcycle. I know other people have done it. And if nothing else, it was fun to experiment and try to pull it off uh, with just physics and mechanicals, but it didn't really work out the way I thought it would. But it was still fun to try. And uh, that's what I do here in the Hack Shack. I just play around with ideas and give them a shot. Not all of them work, but it's always fun to experiment. While you're watching this, I will be up on the Blue Ridge Parkway on the BMW enjoying a little bit of vacation time. Um, nice to be away from it all. And when I get back, back on the CB750, I'm going to work on the front end, get the front bearings in, start truing up some wheels. Got to find some parts for this engine. It's either going to be rod bolts or all new rods and get the engine together. But there's a lot to do in the meantime, so I'll be back on it here for the next few weeks. No electronics, no other stuff, no bread baking, no pie making, no jelly or jam, just the CB750. So I know a lot of you are looking forward to that. Thanks for your patience, because Hack a Week's all about more than just motorcycles. It's about everything. So anyway, I'll catch up with you next week. Till next time. Fritzy. Hi. We need to do a little work on this. I'm done. Are you talking to yourself? Yeah, talking to so, I'll see you next week with the CB750. And until then, bark. <laughs>